Hi, welcome to the 6502 Show. Today, I've got eight baseball games to show you for small, single board computers, limited size, hobby machines, and the like. Now, it's going to be a long one, so I suggest you get some peanuts, some popcorn, Cracker Jack, maybe a hot dog, and a cold adult beverage, because we're going to go all nine with this one. Plus, we're going to have a special guest, so stay tuned for that. You know, baseball is a great game. When I was a kid, I loved to play. I mean, I wasn't all that great, but in fact, I was only good enough basically to make the team. Anyway, baseball is tough. And it's one of the things that I learned as a kid. It is so hard to hit a round ball with a round bat and then catch a ball that's screaming at you, coming in at about 100 miles an hour. And then you're expected to throw 150 feet and be accurate to within about I say a foot. It's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't hard, everyone would do it. The hard is what makes it great. So, uh, difficult game. I appreciate it so much. I appreciate the athleticism. I appreciate the skill and the smarts you need to have to be a great baseball player. Before I get into the computer games, I want to show you a little bit about some of the history of games about baseball in general. It goes way back, almost to the beginning of the game itself. You know, just as the game itself has evolved, games about baseball have evolved. You know, it all started with parlor baseball. This one goes back to the 1880s. People were already interested in the national pastime. And another one that came around in the 1940s was Ethan Allen's All-Star Baseball game. This is still a prized game for collectors, and the little disc cards, they go for crazy prices on eBay. Other games like Home Team Baseball came out around the same time. Boy, does that guy look angry. This came out, and others like Stratomatic came out. My own Superstar Baseball, which that's based on. I played a ton of that. And as well as these wooden games. You got a little board with little tokens or chits, or in this case, little balls, and then a system to roll some dice and get a result. You know, especially when you have 21 different results, you uh, can get a pretty accurate game. Let's start at the very beginning of our evolutionary journey here. And the first program we're going to look at is called Baseball. It was written by Dr. John Kemeny in late 1964. This is probably one of the very earliest simulations of any kind that ran on the then brand new basic language done at Dartmouth College. So let's take a look at Dr. Kemeny's program. It's, again, a simulation more than a game you're not going to get to play anything. What you're going to do is type run and then see what it does. Let's uh, go ahead and do just that. PDP-10 Timesharing World Series. And I get to throw out the first pitch. Okay, a number from 1 to 1,000. Uh, how about that? And it just goes to town. <laughs> inning after inning, and it prints out essentially a, a scorecard. Final score, 0-3. to three. Um, Hmm. Who won? Dodgers left, Yankees right. So, apparently, the Yankees beat the Dodgers. Let's take a look at this uh, scorecard output. Uh, some formatting could be a little bit better, but... We don't know what kind of out it is, but for the terms of a simulation, it doesn't matter. But it's recording singles, walks. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, someone hit a double and then a single that clearly scored the run. Again, a simulation rather than a game. 
But let's move on to the next program where we actually get to play some baseball. Next up is a program simply called Baseball Simulation Program. This was written way back in 1973 by Joel Lind and Ken Berkman when they were at NYU. And it was enhanced a little bit by a fella named R.D. Kurland just a few months later. Well, I had to revive it off of an archived flex disc, and uh, now we have it to play on Altair 680 Basic. Of course, if it runs on Altair 680 Basic, it'll run on just about any Microsoft Basic all the way into the mid-80s. Just a few little tweaks and uh, kinks needed to be made or ironed out, and you'll be ready to go. Well, I'm ready to go with some big baseball, and I call it big baseball simply because you got to play this thing pitch by pitch. Let's take a look. It'd be good to do it the right way, wouldn't it? Well, let's jump to the right address. All right. Well, clearly these guys weren't Yankees fans. Well, let's see. I'll be the goofies. And my name is Dave. <laughs> Losers, of course. All right, we're going to flip a coin. I'm going to say tails, because tails never fails. Oh, I lost the toss. Well, I guess it failed that time. Okay, so when I'm up, I can take a pitch, I can swing away, I can bunt, or I can have my lead runner try to steal if I've got someone on. Nobody's out, batter is up. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to take the first pitch. Let's see what this guy's got. Ah, hi, left it up. I probably should have creamed that one. All right, well, let's see what else he's going to do. I'm going to take that pitch again. Oh, <laughs> with a knuckleball. You gotta be kidding me. All right. I'll bet he goes and throws more junk. Let's see. Fastball, no. I'm gonna swing on this one. Fouled back into the stands. So this game is fairly detailed. You can see that these guys put a lot of thought into this. Apparently, they didn't have enough to do when they were studying at uh, NYU. Okay, well, it's two and two. I gotta gotta protect that plate. Gonna have to swing at something. Ah, lined out the left. I wish they'd let you, you know, protect the plate. Like all things wonderful about basic, you can certainly dig into this and augment it and do anything you want to it. You can make it. Completely crazy, if you'd like. Okay. My next batter is up. What'll I do? Well, in the interest of time, I'm just going to swing away, and then uh, we can look at some of the pitching. Well, that didn't take long. Okay. So, I'm now pitching. I can throw... Fastball, curve, slider, sinker, change up, a knuckleball, a screwball. All right, well, let's uh, start the guy off with a good old curveball. All right, well, there's a strike. Follow that up with uh, some country heat. Urgh. Let's see if he'll bite on my sinker. Ha! Ah! Going back to the good old curveball. Woo-hoo! Over at the knees, you're out. All right. I'll just uh, throw some fastballs here, and we'll get this done. And there we go. That was an inning of play. And this will go on. For nine innings, uh, playing this thing all the way through, oh, get yourself a nice cold adult beverage, because it's going to be a while. Now I've got another early baseball program. This is written in Focal. 
and it's by Philip Hunt going back to the summer of 1974. I found this in a DECUS archive, that's the DEC Users Society, and uh, it was on, uh, it's cataloged as program number 306. Okay, let's give Philip's baseball a go. Literally. Name of our team, we will be the Monsters. You're welcome. Now, this chart is very important. The game revolves entirely around these pitches. So uh, you tell it when you're batting what pitch you expect, and there are calculations that are made, and it'll match up. When you're on defense and out in the field, you get to select a pitch, and it'll do its thing. So let's uh, let's take a few pitches and uh, see what's going on here. I expect the fastball. It is a fastball, and I bunted it. Hey, not bad. Bunting for a base hit. All right, runners on one, which I guess is first. Uh, let's see if he's going to throw me a curveball. Oh, apparently I stole. <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool. Um, I want a brush back pitch. Okay, let's see if he's going to throw me the slider. Oh, thrown out. But the sacrifice was good. So sacrifice hit. Works for me. And curveball again. Hit by the pitch. All right, let's just uh, keep selecting fastballs here and see if we can get one. Fly to right. Hey, but that uh, scored scored a couple runs there, apparently. <laughs> he was thrown out at third. All right. Well, anyway, pitch by pitch, you can see that this game's going to take a long time to play. So we'll uh, bow out right now and uh, yeah, maybe go to the concession stand. Up to the plate next is a simple game, simply called baseball, and I call it little baseball because there's not much interaction going on, and maybe it's not the most sophisticated thing on the planet. This was written in November of 1977 by someone named Egan for the Sol 20 and the Sol 20 Basic. So uh, this got modified a few years later and ended up on a flex disc archive as I have found many fun and interesting things. And this was written for TSC Basic 2. And uh, I modified it a little bit and added some screen clearing codes and these kinds of things, but pretty simple program. Let's give it a look. The name of my team is the... Knotheads. We're going to play for the league pennant against the Hexadex. Well, we'll just play our traditional one inning. I'm the visiting team. Well, let's take a look at the instructions. We each pick a number from one to three. And if they match, whoever's at bat gets a hit or a walk. If the numbers don't match, the team in the field gets the out. All right, pretty simple. Hey, huge crowd. Uh, just try two. All right. My swing matched his pitch, so I got a single, and we have a little graphical representation off to the right. Well, two was fine. Let's keep doing it. Nope. Nope. Ah, another single. So, essentially... You're going to bat 333 if you just bang away on a given number. Here come the Hexadex. I'm just going to keep throwing two. Because why not? We'll get it over with. Well, there's your ball game.
and it doesn't know that it's the end of the only inning because it's a pretty simple game, so you kind of have to play it out. And uh, we get a determination, and sure enough, the Hexadex won. The very early basics did not have the facility to wait for a key press and then just move along. What in the Commodore world we affectionately know as get string, and in other basics it's called in key string. These early, very early basics, like Altair 680 basic, just don't have it. Kim 1 Basic 9 originally did not have it. Although the code was in there, it wasn't implemented in the very first versions. There are patches for that, by the way. So one of the big challenges of taking this home run game and converting it from ZX Basic, which has in-key string, to Altair Basic, was I had to write my own routine. And here it is. Basically, I stole some parts from Swatbug and then pull the thing for about a sixth of a second. And then it returns back, and then we just loop through that over and over and over again until we get a legitimate key press that we want. And anyway, that's what made the program work. Okay, it's loaded up now, and let's give it a run. Just me. Uh, we're the... What are we? We're the tryhards. Number of innings to play. Well, we'll just play one so we get a flavor of this thing. And press any key to continue. Here's where the get string edition comes into play. All I gotta do is just tap a key. And we're ready to go. Uh, the tryhards are batting. There's our status. Pitcher could throw any of these things, and all I'm doing is tapping a key once. I don't have to hit enter, except when it didn't register. <laughs> Two, one, zero. Oh, all right. So the idea is when it hits zero, we swing by just tapping a key. The little countdown can be either on the right side of the screen, left, middle, you don't know. It could go slow, kind of medium, fastish, or fast. You're not quite sure. It's an interesting way to add some player interaction to this thing. Uh oh. Didn't register. I took a strike. Our get string command only uh, it looks for a sixth of a second, and then it's out. Hey, all right, a double. Run is on second and third. And we've already got a run in because we had a double to start with. Uh oh. Oh, no, we're out. Just one out, though. All kinds of time to make things happen. Double up the gap. I'm killing it. Three runs this inning. Crooked numbers, baby. You could probably change this to make it a little more challenging. Just 2 1, or perhaps just a random zero appear somewhere and you gotta nail it right then and there. I don't know. Uh, have fun with it. You know, I certainly have. Now we're going to hear from that special guest. This is my friend Nils, known here on YouTube as Master Hit One. And he's got a really exciting baseball game from 1979. And it is uh, really a one-of-a-kind thing running on a Kim One replica. Hi, Dave, and thank you for having me in your 6502 show. I want to present to you the game Baseball by Bob Liedem. Bob, very friendly guy. Hello, Bob, if you see this. Programmed this game for the Kim 1 computer. The Kim 1 computer has only one kilobyte of RAM in the unexpanded mode, and this game fits into this 1K of RAM. That means we have to load it 
and we can play it like a real action baseball game. This is nothing uh, text-based, this is a real action game. And for this, Bob created this input device, which lets you select the ball which is thrown and the bat that is swung. So let's see how this works. Here we go. You have the um, six um, hex displays where on the right side, the pitcher throws the ball and the batter has to hit the ball with this little thing here. Um, in the in between, you have the points that are counted for each player, how many players are out, which player is on which base, and what ball and how many strikes and everything. Here you see the wiring. You can play it as a single player. Then you can only hit the ball, bat the ball. And uh, as two-player game, you just have to change some memory locations to B and to C to a negative value. Negative values are uh, values below zero, which means FF, for example, I show it to you. So we go to address 2B and 2C, and both are negative. So we have a two-player game. And now my son Till and I will play this game for you on your show. Thank you. So here we go. Let's start the program. We're starting in the first inning and I am the pitcher. I can choose my ball with this little shuffle thing here. Best is my son cannot see it, so I make it hidden. Okay, just for you, I play the um, fast ball now. And if I push the button, the ball will be thrown to my son Till and he tries to replay it. So, Achtung Till. Achtung. <laughs> Ah, strike one. Okay, now I choose a different ball, which is a bit more easier. Ah, strike two. Another one, another one. Yeah, strike three. You're out. First player is out. Now the second player. No one on the base yet. I make it a small ball. Maybe you have a chance now. Take care. Yeah, strike, sorry. <laughs> Let's play it again. Fastball. Oh, a triple. Wow, the first player is in, actually. You you went three bases. We don't know this game in Germany, so I have to explain it to him. And the first player is in now. Oh, strike one. Strike two. Strike three. You're out, two out, one home on the third base. Okay. Oops, single. Okay, now next one, strike one. Woo, single. So you have uh, two players, one on base one, one on base two. Let's try. Oops. Ah. Oh. Strike two. One. Strike three. Out, out. Three out. And z one to zero. Now it's changed to player B, so we have to change the control. My son controls the pitcher, and I the bet, and me the better. So, okay. A single one. Ah, man. Strike. Okay. Ah, strike three out. Um, it it calculates very exact how. I push the button, so it's a one base, two base, three base, even a home run is possible, I think, or if I'm out. So next one. Oh, the fast one. <laughs> the up one or the down one? Oh, a single. Another one. 
come on. Yeah, a double. That means one out, one to one. I try to count the clicking, but he does it up and down. So you're mean. You you try to cheat. No, that's that's the game. Yes. Okay. Oop. <laughs> Three out. Okay. One to one. A, A again. So we have to change. And so on and so on. I hope you find it interesting. The game is available for download. Um, I think I put it on GitHub so you can download it from my JIT and uh, have a nice weekend and a nice time. Back to you, Dave. Thanks so much, Nils and Till. I appreciate uh, the video that you sent in to me. And imagine this, all that game in 1.1K. I mean, Bob had to max out the original Kim One's memory, sticking stuff in the stack area, using the Riot RAM in the just... Wherever he could find it, he used it. Now, last up, I've got three games based on dice baseball. You know, the game you play with a pair of dice and different results result in different plays. And you can chart it all out and play a baseball game with it when you're out camping or sitting around a hotel lobby or whatever you're doing while you're waiting for something to happen. The first one is going to look a lot like Little Baseball. I borrowed some of the Sol 20 basic baseball program using the base running and the little diamond display sections. And um, to varying degrees, these work really well and play a pretty realistic game of baseball. Let's go check them out. Okay, 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 okay. Here is our first program of the three. This is called Baseball Dice. And... Uh, it's uh, written in VTL2. VTL2 is already running. Let's start the program by jumping to line number one. Yeah, let's look at the rules. And there are dice rolls. And this is pretty much what I played as a kid. And uh, it's actually pretty close to the uh, 2023 Major League Baseball season. The average is for the American League. Innings to play. Well, we'll just play uh, We'll play one as a demo here so we don't waste too darn much time. Flip the coin. I'm the visitor. The octals are up. So all I do is just tap return and see what my dice roll is. And I got a single. Tap it again. Popped it up. One out. I got another single, and if I get a hit, it updates the little diamond board so I can see what's going on. Uh-oh, double play. I'm out of there. The hexadecks are up, and this just runs on its own. You don't tap anything. You just watch it do its thing. But ha! He hit into a double play. Awesome. And got a ground out there. So uh, that's the end of the inning, and that's the ball game. It's a tie, because used to in Japan... Baseball games ended in ties. It's true. This next version of Baseball Dice was done just for the hell of it. Just to see if I could do it. And I wrote it in Tiny Pilot. This originally was a dice game from 1944. A fellow named Henri Roca uh, relayed the information about this game to a baseball game website. And uh, he learned this at age nine when he moved to Louisiana and was taught this by a couple of brothers from Aruba. So I'm calling it Aruba Baseball Dice. Let's start it up. Here is Henri's play system, and it plays a pretty darn good game. Uh, you will note at the bottom here, it takes between 8 and 17 seconds to determine uh, a dice roll because it's Tiny Pilot. It is not made to do this. Uh, Pilot, as you know, excels as a dialogue engine. Not so good at math, and Tiny Pilot only has addition and subtraction and equals comparison. Everything else, you've got to manufacture yourself, which we had to do a couple of times to make comparisons and uh, greater than, less than, and uh, we have to do some division. But it plays, 
and it won't keep score for you, but because this is really made for kids, I came up with a little system you can just draw on a sheet of paper, and you can keep score that way. And now I've got the 6502 show action cam going, so you can see the uh, scoring system right along with me. All right, let's uh, start the game with a, the random number between 1 and 20. How about 8? We're randomizing here. There's no real-time clock in uh, the HM68 computer, or a lot of small single-board computers anyway, so this is one way to help yourself get a more of a random game instead of just the same game every time. You have to put in a little, little loop. Okay, we're going to enter the name of the visiting team. Let's uh, say it's the Tigers. The name of the home team are the Monsters. Top of inning one. Tigers are up to bat. Nobody's out. Let's start the game. And you will see that this is tedious and gets old quick. Maybe even quickly. Dice are rolled, and it's got a search through all 11 possibilities and it does them one at a time because that's what it has to do woof strike out one out we'll roll the dice again and we'll scratch our head and we'll fiddle with the tokens here maybe i should have named the team the lincolns i don't know routine grounder out for three there were no runners on base, as we can see right here. And uh, we'll roll again. Maybe I should spend the time learning to whistle better. I don't know. Woof, another strikeout. Sides retired. Okay, monsters come up to bat. And we roll the dice. And we wait. A solid single. All right. So I'll take my token and put him on first. We'll roll again. Strike out. One out. Okay, what I'm going to do is condense this and take out all the time in between, but we'll play out the inning and see how it goes. So, here we are. Runners advance only if forced. Well, our guy here on first would have been forced. He had to go uh, on the ground ball, so he goes up here. There is no fielder's choice. The batter is always out. Now, I have rules about fielder's choice that I like to add in my own dice game, which we will see in just a little bit. Because why would you not throw out the guy on a 4-3? You'd, you'd, no, it'd be 4-6. Fielder's choice. That's how you would do it. Oh, the shortstop booted it. Runner safe on the error. So we'll put a runner there. That guy held because there's no instruction that he would have run, necessarily. And, of course, if the ball's hit in front of him, if it went to short, he ain't going to go anyway. There's a single. I have the bases loaded, but two out. Okay, here's hoping for a big hit. Oh, strikeout. And that's the end for me. I left the bases loaded. Well, clearly, this is a uh, good system you can use, and I've used this for years, like on camping trips or when traveling or something. And what I'll often do, you know, if I'm just playing with regular dice or, you know, we're killing some time in a hotel lobby or whatever, and I'll uh, just do this. And then... Add another little token, 
say this guitar pick here and uh, that will tell me my outs one two three so I would have that as well if I'm uh, keeping track of that sort of thing all right let's move on to our last game one I'm actually pretty proud of because it plays a pretty damn good baseball game all right now on to our final game Yaku Saikuro. Please pardon my pronunciation. I don't actually speak Japanese. Anyway, this is a dice baseball game, much like the one that I eventually played in grade school. You know, rainy winter days, it's cold. I'm tired of getting hit in the face with a dodgeball. And sometimes we'd stay in uh, to the library and play baseball dice. And we came up with some pretty elaborate rules. Well, I've incorporated some of them into this game. Let's uh, jump on over and take a look at it. All right, our familiar hexadex are there. We're playing for the Computer League pennant, and we will be the monsters. Surprise, surprise. Same as in the VTL version, but lots more bells and whistles under the hood. Let's play three innings. This goes pretty quickly, especially compared to the last game we viewed. Well, it sure looks like rain here at Meiji Jinku Stadium. Not too many fans, but we're going to play anyway. And we're up to bat first as the visitors. Oh, strikeout right off the get-go. I'm sure the home team loves that. The dice were originally came from an Apple One Yahtzee game that was written by Larry Nelson back in 1977. I kind of uh, augmented it to make the dice look a little nicer. Hey, a ringing double way out to the gap. You know, one of the things I do like about this is um, it's kind of like Doing baseball on the radio, you know, you sit and you listen to the game and you imagine the plays as the announcers are describing it. And uh, you can really just kind of see it in your mind's eye. I kind of get some of that same feeling when I play these dice games. Popped it up, three outs, stranded my guy on second there. Here come the hexadex, which means I'm pitching. There's an out, deep to the outfield. And another one. Well, they're making contact. Now, three flyouts. Nice. Wouldn't mind a ground ball now and then, but <laughs> that's cool too. Okay. Top of the second. Well, I didn't mean right now. There's a single for me. Now you can see, unlike the previous game, hit a grounder, it went out to either short or second, I'm assuming, and they it's fielder's choice. They picked off the lead runner. And that's what should happen. Oop, popped it up much for that all right here they come again Ooh, lead off single that's not good yeah that time I even told you what it did and I've got we used to do called second rolls. So if you hit the grounder, then you've got a roll to see if it's a double play, if that situation even exists, or if it's fielder's choice, or if um, they don't get the lead runner, or, you know, is there going to be a sacrifice? It, we had bunting rules, too, uh, that got pretty complicated. You know, it was all written out on a sheet of notebook paper at one point. But that paper is long gone. 
It was a lot of fun recreating the game, though, here on my Monster 68 machine. Okay, we are up to bat. All right, I got a base on balls. Lead off walk. I'm going to try to steal second. Okay, I can still call it off, but we're, we're going to do it. Let's go. Oh, no, snake eyes. Gun down. Well, that's what I get. Yeah, I'm being aggressive, I suppose. Squandering that lead off walk. Ugh, called third strike. And a single. Two out single. That ain't going to do it. All right, I guess my only hope, since the score is 0-0 zero to zero and we're going to the bottom of the third, is to deny these guys a run. And we can end up in a tie that way. Oh, no. That, uh, that dream is fading. Lead-off triple. Good grief. And there's the single. It's a walk-off win for the Hexadex. All right. Hope you enjoyed uh, taking a look at that game, because I had a lot of fun putting it together. Thanks again to Nils and Till for demonstrating Bob Leadham's baseball game. That was really cool. And I want to remind you that all the software you've seen is available either off my website or on uh, Nils GitHub, various places on the net. There are links in the description below for you. Go pick that stuff up and have a good time. Well, that's it for this special baseball edition of the 6502 Show. I hope you had fun. I had a great time putting this together and sharing it with you. If you liked the video, and I hope you did, do hit the like button. And you can also subscribe and you'll be informed when new videos come out here on the channel. All right, that's the ball game. So until we see each other again, take care.